Hello guys, welcome back to PW Method YouTube channel and here we are going to see a series of videos which is going to focus on your pathology practical exam, especially the gross diagnosis. Gross mounted specimen is definitely one of the important things which happens in your viva and the practicals. Since the theory is over, now let's focus on practicals, slowly build the concepts and ace the practicals also with method, right? If you're first time here, click on the subscribe button. I'm Dr. Anjit. Let's learn pathology and medicine together. The first thing and the foremost important thing in a viva is it's a mind game. More than a knowledge game, it's more of a mind game. You have to present yourself better so that the examiner looks at you and says, okay, this girl or guy has done a good job. Let's give them 5 out of 10, the pass mark, or let's give them a distinction of honors based on your answers, right? So most important thing which I look from a second year MBBS student who's sitting in a viva is not the diagnosis. Please remember, no examiner expects you to tell the diagnosis. Because we are 100% sure you already memorized every diagnosis. Okay, C121, splenomegaly. You must have already made that. That every examiner knows by default, right? So what I expect is, don't please blurt out the diagnosis when you come and sit in front of the examiner. The most important is how I arrive to the diagnosis. Even if your flow is good, even if your logic is good, and if your diagnosis is wrong, doesn't matter for us. We'll give you more mark than a person who tells the exact diagnosis, right? So a few mantras which will be very, very useful for you in attending an exam. First of all, start the, let's say the exam is given four specimens there and ask you, please choose this specimen. Take this specimen for at least 15, 20 seconds. Look at it, turn it, look at both sides and try to formulate what you're going to say in your head. 15, 20 seconds. Take time. Don't immediately answer. Then start with, it's a jar mounted specimen of so and so structure, so and so organ. Let's say it's lung. Then how did he identify as a lung? We can see the fissure and the cut parenchyma has the carbon deposit, so it's a lung parenchyma. Then look at the normal area and then compare to the abnormal area. This looks abnormal and tell why it looks abnormal, right? If something can be only felt, you have to add that this is a jar mounted specimen, I will not be able to feel, but I probably think this is the answer. And if it's a cancer, please do mention that what's the dimension of the cancer because TNM staging is very important. Approximate dimension. You can just keep a note that this is 2.5 centimeter, right? You can just use your finger to measure it. Why one phalanx is going to be 2.5 centimeter. Based on that, I give an approximate thing. And how far is it from the edges of the receptor solution, right? Then please don't answer like a squamous cell carcinoma foot directly. Also, low fungating mass. So most probably squamous cell carcinoma needs a microscopic biopsy to ascertain my diagnosis, to tell my diagnosis correctly. This flow is what we expect. We do not expect right answers. If your flow is right now, automatically you'll do it, right? Let's see uh, five or six specimens today. In the subsequent videos, we'll see all the things required for you. And let's learn, make sure the practical exam is also sorted, fine? Okay, the first specimen here, I am sure I can see that. Again, I'm going to use the same thing, whatever I said, it's a classical jar mounted specimen of most probably a lung parenchyma. One, because of the shape and because of the fissure. I have a horizontal fissure, so there are two lobes, right? And here, if you look at this lung, this entire upper lobe of lung looks a little bit spongy in texture. Say it looks, because I cannot feel it, right? Looks more or less porous, like a normal lung parenchyma. You can also see these blackish deposits. These are nothing but anthracotic pigment. But when you look at the lower half of the lung, this lower half of the lung looks extremely white in color. That's not the normal color of lung. Normal color of lung is a little bit grayish color. That's the normal color of lung. And here it looks extremely white. I have to feel the lung to know the texture. I feel that, again, I feel that this part of the lung could be firm. So if it is firm, this entire part, I'm going to call it a consolidated lung, right? So consolidated means it's nothing but a non-aerated lung, that's all. Right? This could be entirely a consolidated lung. If it's a consolidated lung parenchyma, and since the entire lower lobe is consolidated, my most probable diagnosis could be a lobar pneumonia. If you answer like this, then questions go on lobar pneumonia. What is lobar pneumonia? What is bronco pneumonia? The organism which can be involved in lobar bronco, the complications. These are a few answers which you have to be make sure you know the answers. The BW Metal Lectures has all the answers for you. So go to the topic, just revise it quickly, and that should be more than enough to handle one, two minutes of discussion, right? So this is a case, a classical example of a jar mounted specimen of a low bar pneumonia. Let's go to the next image. Okay, beautiful. Okay, this is a huge big image, right? So now uh, it's most likely an amputation part of the foot, right? Though I don't have much of it, but looking at the architecture, maybe here there might be toes. I can say easily that there's an amputated part of the left or right foot, if you're able to say based on the toes availability, or just say foot, right? In the amputated part of the foot, there is a sizable area in the lower half of the specimen, which is looking irregular first, 
it's looking a little bit darkish second and multiple tiny openings are seen on the surface it's on the surface it's not cut right it should be mentioned exactly irregular darkish areas compared to the normal foot which is seen here you can point out to the examiners when we are discussing with the examiner and multiple openings are seen in the affected area so i presume that since there are multiple openings these must be discharging sinuses a lower limb foot with a discolored and ugly looking skin with a multiple discharging sinus first diagnosis is going to be mycetoma foot in madura mycosis that's the first diagnosis and uh, what is madura mycosis fungal actinomyces i'm sure dr mamta must have taken in microbiology lectures please go because it's more of a microbiology thing but the specimen comes to the pathology this is in madura mycosis or a mycetoma foot right that's a classical exam case right next that's a very simple one yellow right yellow means obviously fat right so now, now, now let's describe the structure see because this is a classical picture of a lipoma you know for a fact it's a lipoma because i'm sure that markings will be there and photographs must have been with you so how do i describe lipoma because in lipoma i don't have any other organ i cannot say it's a lung i cannot say it's a foot because it's only the tissue here right so how do i describe it first of all i would say this is a resected specimen it looks like a resected specimen of some tumor i don't know what it is why i'm saying resected specimens i don't see any normal parenchyma or normal structure along with it so i'm saying it's a resected specimen right and this here it's a cut surface of a resected specimen because it's not complete a resected specimen will be three dimension right you can see all over the capsule or something but here it's uniform it's obviously a cut surface of a resected specimen which appears to be well defined okay which appears to be well defined that's next thing for me because i'm leading the examiner to saying it's a benign condition right and i'm not sure whether the end of the specimen is a little bit dark compared to the center of the specimen so i presume that this could be the compressed part of the capsule again i presume because i don't know exactly i have to look into the microscopy right the center of the specimen here this is the entire tumor again you can measure and tell, tell the size if required right center of the specimen is most of the time homogeneous see these words are very very important it's definitely homogeneous it's not irregular it's uniform right homogeneous i presume it is, should be firm to solid because i have not palpated it and yellow in color that is very very important a homogeneous yellow texture no areas of hemorrhage no areas of necrosis you can add on to it again reiterating that if there is necrosis or hemorrhage i might think of a malignancy right no areas of hemorrhage no areas of necrosis a homogeneous specimen so most likely my thought is lipoma okay so i would need a histopathological examination to prove it's a lipoma right clear okay so if it's one layer specimen start with a resected specimen if you feel it's a hysterectomy uterus being removed start with saying it's a hysterectomy specimen if you feel it's a hand or a leg start with saying it's an amputation specimen if it's a stomach start with saying it's a gastrectomy specimen that's make you more scientific than just being a second year student right we are doctors you are going to become doctors when you join mbbs you are my fellow colleague that's all so a doctor talks in terms of scientific terms that makes you more confident examiner feels good you'll definitely get more marks right there's a classical sample of life over let's go to the next one okay this is a bit huge right so this also is an amputation specimen i don't know what part of amputation is i am not actually saying the toes toes maybe if you turn the specimen you can see the toes like you can say which part of the foot it is right i hope it is foot and if it's foot i'll start saying it's an amputated part of left or right foot now in the plantar aspect that's very very important you don't describe foot as top and bottom plantar dorsal foot and arms right anterior posterior for few structures superior inferior for few structures left and right for few structures right so this is an amputation part of his foot where in the plantar aspect i'm having let's say 3 into 3 or 4 into 4 cm bit of an elevated lesion which is looking pearly white in color because i'm sure you know the diagnosis right so lead them to that maybe an ulcero proliferating mass right an ulcero proliferating mass whitish in color in the plantar aspect of the foot most likely a tumor originating from the skin since the plantar of the foot and it's not pigmented i would think in terms of a squamous cell carcinoma okay it's a clear cut answer 30 seconds is enough for you to nail that to the examiner see i know stuff i'm describing it properly amputation plantar aspect the size ulcero proliferative fungating mass pearly white or whitish in color most likely arising from skin since it's not pigmented lesion of skin in this area the most likely thing will be squamous cell carcinoma of foot then they might go for a little bit about history of it and you can definitely say chronic non healing ulcers one of the them 
and microscopic keratin pearls, IHC, P63 and P40, everything is sought, right? That's a classical case of a squamous cell carcinoma of foot, right? Next. Ah, beautiful specimen, right? Okay, let's go. So we'll start with this is a colectomy specimen. When you go to final year, you will know different types of colectomy. As of now, you can say a colectomy specimen or a resected specimen of colon. That should be more than enough, right? So here in the resected specimen of colon, so what I see here is this part. The lower half of colon has something abnormal. Rest of the colon looks unremarkable, right? You don't see any uh, uh, um, polyps or tiny things there, right? In the lower end of the colon, I see like say like five into six centimeter, a fungating growth or an ulcero proliferative growth. This looks like tiny amounts of papillary projections here and there. And most likely, this is a colonic adenocarcinoma. You can say carcinoma of colon, most likely since a common thing, colonic adenocarcinoma. When you describe colon or when you describe stomach, it's very, very, very important to describe the normal parenchyma as well. Because FAP can be there, HNPCC can be, can be there, right? So is it only a colon carcinoma or a hereditary colonic carcinoma makes very important here, right? So once you're done with describing this, the rest of the colon looks relatively unremarkable. There are no polyps, there are no other lesions in the rest of the colon. Because when I am saying lesions, it could be a patient with Crohn's disease. Crohn's can result in adenocarcinoma, right? So I should make sure that the rest of the colon is con completely unremarkable. That is very, very important. So most likely, this is a colonic adenocarcinoma. So over to questions, right? That's, that's how it is. Very simple, clear distinction. Colonic uh, resection specimen or a colectomy specimen, so on, so length. In the lower half of the specimen, I am seeing like 4 into 5 centimeter, a fungating ulcero proliferating mass. Since it's looking like arising from mucosa, my first diagnosis will be carcinoma colon, most likely an adenocarcinoma because that's the most common cancer. The rest of the colonic mucosa looks unremarkable, no polyps or no any other uh, lesion which is which might uh, think in terms of a sporad uh, syndromic etiology or an etiology like an in, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, right? Classical adenocarcinoma of colon, right? Perfect. Next. This is the last for today. Don't worry, I won't bore you much, okay? This is a classical case of gastrectomy, right? So this is a gastrectomy specimen. So how do I say it's gastrectomy? Beautiful rugosity, right? So it's a total or a partial gastrectomy specimen. So with, I can identify the stomach specimen with the help of rugosities, beautiful rugosities there. And definitely in whichever part of maybe the topmost or superior aspect of the stomach, I have a mass which is measuring like uh, 4 into 5 centimeter, 5 into 5 centimeter. This is an image, so I cannot measure it. I'm just giving a random measurement, that's all. Again, an ulcero proliferative mass. Looks like few areas. It's kind of necrotic, right? How do you know it's a necrotic tissue? Look at this place. This place is very solid. It looks like a normal structure, normal fold. But here, it's kind of, kind of getting distorted, like a moth-eaten appearance, right? Generally in gross, if it's like a moth-eaten appearance, think of a necrotic tissue, right? Maybe here and there necrosis, ulcero proliferative lesion in the stomach, most likely my diagnosis is carcinoma, and most probably is going to be adenocarcinoma of stomach, right? Here you can actually tell with confidence this could be an intestinal variant. Because in a diffuse variant of adenocarcinoma of stomach, you won't have the mass, you'll have the linitis plastica, right? So that's all for today. So we saw quite a few uh, gross specimen discussion and we'll see more soon. Follow uh, us for more. And if you have any doubts, put in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer it, right? See you soon. Till then, bye-bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye-bye.